realize as I'm doing that, if you guys are watching this, that picture is hilarious. This is marketing moms. And the picture that comes up as we start is us in a car. And it's from a photo shoot we did, but it's not the photographer's picture. It was one of our staff who took the picture. And of course, we're driving by in a car and she's snapping it. So Anastasia's hair is over her face and my eyes are closed and there's a bag in the background but it's still a cute picture. So that's why it's up. So we are Marketing Mums and we are here today to talk to you about marketing in a way that is easy because marketing shouldn't be hard. It should be easy. You don't have time for hard. If you're a small business owner, you don't have time to deal with trying to figure out all the details. And so we want to give you those details. And each week, we want to give you a little bit more that you can put to work for what you do. But also, we want to give you something you can walk away with every single time. So we're, I'm Ann. I'm Anastasia. And we're marketing moms. So Anastasia had this brilliant idea last week. She says, let's give them a, a an actionable item. And so it occurred to me that I'm just going to let this be a surprise for Anastasia every week, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but good. I think, I think you'll agree with me on this one. So over the weekend, I was working on a client who um, one of the things we talk about, about a lot is when you do social media, a great tactic is to tag other people who you can help in some way. And so this person has a business in the medical field and they um, wanted to, what they do is they have a directory and in this directory, they want to really highlight the people who are part of it right? But there are, they're all in the medical field. And so one of the things we were trying to do is share their photo, share a little bit about them, their bio, and then say, call this person. And what I noticed was about three quarters of them had selfies for headshots. And I want to discourage that. And I'll tell you why. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to tell you why. Anastasia, why? It just doesn't look professional, right? Mm -hmm. And they're always taken at a like at an angle to make you look your best, but it's not necessarily like it just comes down to professionalism. Professionalism, that, yeah. yeah it, no selfies and no pictures of yourself at like a wedding where you're cutting out a person, like where you yes. can see like that. That one gets me too, where it's like okay, so it's a great photo of you but you've just cut somebody else out and it's obvious, you right. know? So. Well, and, and I'll tell you, you know, one thing that I see a lot is especially women, uh, but I see it with men too, where they take a picture that was 10 years ago and they share that there, there's a, there's a local real, realtor and you know exactly who I'm talking about. There's a local realtor who has a picture on all of her things. It's a headshot from the 1980s. It is 2021 and she's got a picture that's what that's 40 years old she mm -hmm. doesn't look like that anymore and that's okay we age so one of the things i wanted to suggest is please get a headshot but also do it regularly as you change do it regularly we have a client who did her headshots while she was pregnant and then she went back and did them afterwards and we've had people who you know have changed a lot. We had, who is it right now? We're dealing with someone who had, oh, their hair is green and they're doing, they've said, I'm going to go natural. So right now she's got a picture of herself with black hair and then it's, she's switching it. Um, she actually has taken a headshot in between as it's growing out. And I think it's okay because I think that way when people meet you, they're not surprised. They don't, they don't go, oh, <laughs> you're different than I thought. Right. So your headshots are important. Plus, for social media, people are going to ask for them a lot. They're going to ask for them. Um, this weekend, I applied for a board uh, position. And Anastasia, I haven't told you that yet. But I have, did apply for that board position. We did talk about it. Yeah. Um, and I had to send a headshot, right? Or I uh, somebody a couple weeks ago said, hey, uh, you're going to be speaking at this event. Can you please send me your bio and a headshot? You're going to need it a lot. So take it and take, it doesn't cost that much money. Even if you go to Sears, honest to God, I think there's, you know, places like that. Do they Sears even exist? Does Sears exist anywhere? JC Penney's. 
Yeah, but yeah. but there are so many local photographers, honestly. Give them a call. Find a local photographer. Ask them how much they charge for a headshot. Sometimes they'll give you a, a better rate if you arrange for several other people to come with you. Mm -hmm. So do that. But whatever the case, oh, my God, get a headshot. So that's my actionable item. Put it on your calendar today and get it done in the next couple of weeks because it's important. It makes you look more professional. So that's that's me. I'm off the soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. We're going to talk about our audience today. Anastasia, we, not our particular audience, but when we say audience, tell everybody what we're talking about. When we talk about audience, we're talking about who is, I would say your your, tar your target audience is your customer base. So who are you trying to reach? And then there's that differentiation on social with who's actually looking at your stuff, right? So you might think that you're appealing to people in their 20s and 30s, but then you get on social and we can see, sign it, we can see the demographics and you're actually appealing to men in their 50s you know so it is important for you to know your audience so that you can target your marketing towards them right absolutely so and and what will happen a lot is that people only think in these small bets they don't they're like oh well it's people women in their 50s well what kind of women so i want to suggest that you start with profiles right? And we'll have clients who have multiple profiles. So maybe, yes, maybe it is women in their 50s who come in, but maybe it's also the husband who's making decisions. So you've got to pick, you, you've got to have a profile for him as well. But maybe there's an outlier out there and it's 30 year olds who've just bought their first house, right? So I want you to start creating a profile. And in order to do that, you're going to have to ask yourself some, quest some questions. Uh, the first are like the easy things. Yeah. What are the, is it a man or a woman? Is it, uh, yeah, this, these days you have to think another, a whole other way. Is it somebody in the LGBT community, L LGBTQ community, right? Is it somebody, so what are, what are they in that sense? Are they black? Are they white? Are they indigenous? You know, are they, uh, whatever it is, what are they? Who are they? Like really think about that part. But then you have to go further than that. And you have to think about what do they do? So when we talk about that, Anastasia, can you talk a little bit about what, what we ask? What do they do? So it, when we say what do they do, it doesn't necessarily mean their profession. It can mean what are they doing on the weekends? Where are you going to reach them? So you need to have this profile of, say, you're profiling me, right? So you're looking for a mom in her 40s and she spends her weekends on the soccer field and the football field and at the high school volleyball. Those are my kids, right? So those are the things that you're looking for. Where else am I going? Am I going to the gym? Do I go and get smoothies? Like what, like little things that you might not think are important, but they change the way you think and how to, um, and how you're going to approach them. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that we, we, when you go back to what do they do, we'll have a lot of people who will say, especially because we do a whole lot of work lately, and, and this is almost new for us. It's not really new, but it's, it's gotten heavier lately that we do a lot of B2B business, right? Mm -hmm. We work with a lot of B2B companies. And so we'll say, well, what do they do? And they say, well, they're, uh, they're alignment. They, they're, they're out on their truck and they're doing this. And I'm like, okay, but when they're not doing that, what are they doing? Because if they're at work or if you're talking about, oh, well, they're the receptionist. The receptionist may, makes that decision because she's the one who's ordering the supplies or whatever it is. You're not necessarily trying to reach her while she's sitting behind her desk. You're trying to reach her when she wakes up in the morning. What is she doing when she wakes up? Well, most moms, I will tell you, are going on Facebook or Instagram in the morning. They're checking their emails, right? So email marketing might be a really good way for you to do it. So think about what they're doing outside of what they do. Now, that doesn't mean dismiss that, right? So um, we work with a company called DentCore. They are a dental supply company. And when they ask themselves that question, what do they do? Well, one of the things they know that they're customers do is that they go to conventions. So mm -hmm. Dent Corps goes to a lot of educational conventions for dentists. 
it's what you know it's it's where they can reach them so think that way as well and you know we can think about people if you're trying to reach moms and they're going to volleyball games on the weekend well maybe you put an ad in that kid's you know in that kid's school you find out how you become a booster at that kid's school um or those children's school so think outside the box don't just think about what i'm doing on social media or what i'm doing and you know for radio advertising but think about what are those other small things you can do so, um, and then what do they like, right? What do they, what's going to make them feel good, right? Oh, Anastasia's ringing. <laughs> I'm going to mute you, Anastasia. You can unmute yourself in just one minute. So ask them, what do they like? What, what are the things that they, that already appeal to them? So if it's somebody who enjoys going to the fair, right? then there may be there's sort of people who are looking for other things like that. Is there a way for you to give them that same feeling or that same experience? For us, that's something with Burgers and Bands. We're thinking about the people who are coming to Burgers and Bands. What other things do they like? What other things do they do? How can we appeal to them so that they want to come to our event as well? I just unmuted you, Anastasia. Okay. So that doesn't happen. You know, this is a brand new show. So, you know, yeah. it's going to happen. <laughs> All right. Um, and then think about why are they shopping? Right? Why are they shopping? So if you think about that, Anastasia, can you want to explain that a little bit when you're when you're saying, well, why are they shopping? Because they're not necessarily, they didn't just say, oh, I want to wake up and give Joe Smo some money this morning. There's a reason behind it. Exactly. So some things either they have some we always go back to this pain points thing, right? So there's there's something that they would prefer either they not do or they need help with something or, you know, they've got a leak in their bathroom, you know, so there's, it depends on, so sometimes it'll just be shopping for shopping sake, you know, some people like to do that. But then for most people, it is, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z because this is what's happening in my life. Absolutely. So you want to figure that out. What are they trying to do? Maybe it's just that they want to feel good. I mean, if you're selling, if you're selling ice cream, maybe they just had a breakup, right? And they, and they want ice cream because it makes them feel better. So what are you trying to make them feel as part of this? Why are they shopping? Right. Yeah. But as most people, when they're shopping, yes, they're try. It's because of a pain point and it's how they want to feel better. They want to feel less stressed because, OK, you fixed the toilet that's leaking into their dining room. Right. <laughs> leaking through the ceiling. It's a true story that happened. Um, but <laughs> so whatever it is, how are you going to make them feel? Think about that when you're creating your things, because it's not always about what where you're going to reach them. It's about how are you going to make them feel in your advertising as you reach them? How are you going to make mm -hmm. them feel in the marketing? Uh, that goes, actually, we can pull that headshot into here. Thinking about it. I didn't think about that when we started talking about this. But your headshot, if you are a doctor and your headshot is a selfie and I'm going to come to you for surgery, am I likely to come to you if your headshot is a, if your headshot is a selfie? I don't think so. I think I'm much more likely to go to the guy who's got a real selfie, who looks professional and looks like he knows what he's doing, at least there, right? It's a very simple thing. So think about what, what you're trying to make them feel. And that headshot is just part of it. I didn't even tie that into this. That was just an aggravation of mine over the weekend when I was working. So, yeah. all right. Well, it's definitely something that needs to be considered. And if you can't afford to get a headshot, they shouldn't be, they're not that expensive, but if you can't get somebody to at least try and take a professional looking photo with your phone, like you can put it in portrait mode and take a picture. Just do so anything's better than a selfie. <laughs> yes. But let me also say this. I, the last couple of headshots I've gotten have been free and yeah. not that, not the most recent one, but, but I had a beautiful one free, um, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And the way I did it is that I happened to be speaking at an event and they had set up free headshots for the event. They had had somebody who come in who did free headshots. I went to a Facebook event. They did it. Lots of people will have these. So constantly be on the lookout. If you don't have it in your budget, be on the lookout for it. But honestly, it doesn't have to be that expensive. Just make yeah. sure you have a headshot. So um, that was a quick one, but it is not. 
it is not quick because it's not important. It's quick because it doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. Right. It's so important. If you say to me, what's the worst thing somebody can say when you say, who's your audience? That's a oh, past Anastasia. People in there, people at 30 to 50. That's, that's, that's where we a, get. No, that's a bad one. Or the worst, though, is everybody. Everybody. everybody that's right. It. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and sometimes you do ask yourself that. You're like, well, why not? Because, you know, everybody likes chocolate. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm selling chocolate. Everybody likes chocolate. Well, yeah, yeah. But what kind of chocolate are you selling? Are you selling chocolate at, you know, the, the, you know, penny chocolate where you can go get a piece or are you selling, you know, the chocolate that makes you close your eyes and go, mm -hmm. right. So are you doing yeah. something that is, you're like, what was that Matilda where she's like, oh, that candy's too good for children. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. So maybe you're selling candy that's too good for children. There, I it have that candy in my matter. house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, my children have really good taste in chocolate because I never buy the crap. <laughs> 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 so I'm probably somebody's target audience when it comes to chocolate. So yeah. well, it matters, right? Like depending on your price point, depending on um, who you want your target, who you want your customers to be. I mean, you know. There are people that we prefer not to work with. So we do not target any of our marketing towards those people, you know, right. to, or, uh, towards those kinds of businesses. So it, it does matter. And even though your product or service may be for everybody, those are the kinds of things you need to think about. Who do I like working with if you're oh, a yeah. service? And who are those people that I like working with specifically? So that when you're creating content, if you know that, let's go back to that whole, I'm your target audience. If you know that your target audience is a mom with three kids who, you know, does, you know, sports on the weekends, goes to the gym, listens to podcasts, reads these books, or listens to books in my case, listens to books, then you kind of have this picture of her, of her in your head so that when you're creating content, you know what's going to appeal to her. You know, because exactly. if you're uh, if you're showing me golf courses, not going to help you, you know, right. so it's go. So those are the kinds of things that you need to think about when you're talking about your audience. So, yes, it isn't difficult. Just come up with a few avatars um, and it can be over a wide range. But just make sure that when you're creating content for these people, whether it be on social media or in advertising, that you're promotion is targeted towards that person specifically Absolutely. you know yeah you i mean have multiple well if you think about it anastasia let's i mean we can give an example so four season lawn care land care mm -hmm. um one of the things that we do for him is we would talk about what would you like to be doing this weekend and a lot of the photos we used were were dads running around at the beach with their kids or running around a soccer field with their kids riding bikes with their kids. It was all things that were like our target target audience were men between the ages of 35 and 55. They had mm -hmm. kids, they had houses in the, you know, 500,000 to a $2 million range. So they, they can afford somebody to come and take care of their lawn. So we really targeted that. And we had a picture in our head of what he looked like. We even knew he had mm -hmm. a dad bod, right? <laughs> So, so that was what something I was going to mention. Make sure, look at a picture, go on Unsplash and say, you know, start looking for a picture. Is that my target audience? Is that the guy I want? You know, because mm -hmm. if you're selling, what, what is it? Paps Blue Ribbon Beer. Maybe you're looking for the guy who wears the trucker hat and has the big belly and, and, you know, is spending his weekend watching TV and, and that sort of thing. You're like, that's my guy. I'm going to put an advertisement on the television on Sundays because he's watching professional football. Right. But if it's not, then you got to find out who the guy is. Look for that picture because sometimes just having the picture in your head helps a lot. So. Yeah. All right. I want to encourage you. We spend a lot of time talking on here about all the little things we think about. And I don't actually feel like audience is a little thing. I think it's probably the single biggest thing and people just don't think about it enough. But 
if you're thinking, oh my gosh, in 20 minutes, I've learned so much that I haven't even thought about, I would ask you to go over to asmmdigital.com slash blog and look at our blog. Our blog has so much information on there. You can learn so much. And whether you want to hire us to do your digital marketing or you want to hire somebody else to do your digital marketing or not, learning about how to do it, learning about why you need to do it, learning about what you need to know about your customers, about your product, about your pricing, all of that is important and it's all over on the blog and it will help you so much. And then before we go, we have to talk about burgersandbands.org. So Anastasia, do you want to tell them about what Burgers and Bands is and when they're doing it this year? Yes. So we are coming up actually this Sunday. So we are very oh, six days away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. It is exciting. Um, well, Burgers and Bands you do that. Is, a, um, is a nonprofit that Ian started with her son, Ethan, and the, mes the the goal is to change the conversation. We want to make sure that um, people know that mental health is, is health, it's important, and it's okay to not be okay. And that people, we want people to know that you're not alone. So even though, you know, depression and mental illness can make you feel like nobody else cares or that you are alone, that's not the case. It's lying to you. And we're here to try and help you see that um, there is help out there and that the pain does end. You just have to hold on. So, um, yeah. And so this weekend we have our event at one of our events uh, and uh, we raise money for uh, awareness and for mental health programs in our local schools. And we hope to take this globally one day um and uh it's a really fun event it's like what do we have this year I don't two, know stages, two stages i said 14 but i think we have 17 bands 17 bands and they all donate their time everybody involved in this donates their time and it's incredible because i mean we couldn't do it without our our, our volunteers are the, are the best we send out an email they respond and they and they show up and yeah, we're super lucky with that, too. That's something that uh, people will say, how do you do that? And I'm like, I have no idea. We just got really, really lucky that people really like the cause. So uh, we'll have bouncy houses. It's very family friendly. We say it's a music festival, but it's not that kind of music festival. It's not the kind that you're going to come and and yeah there will not be drugs there you know there is booze yeah. because that's you know part of the part of the festival but it is very very family friendly there are bouncy houses we're looking for a face painter if anybody knows one we're still waiting for our face painter because we we didn't get one this year uh we have tie-dyeing um we have a tie-dye tent we have all kinds of fun things happening for the kids and for the parents and it's just going to be a great oh and the and great food I know there's burgers and there's pulled pork and um, there you say that I'll, the other one because I'm not Greek. Euros. Yes. So since we're doing it at the Greek church, it's burgers, bands and baklava, as Ian says. Um, and we have uh, baklava Sundays, which are awesome and euros. So I I'm Greek. I'm, I'm partial to my gyro. If I if, it, if that's an option, I'll probably get that over a burger any day. I will probably do that, too. Just so you know, because <laughs> it, is at, you know, it is at the Byzantium, which is attached to the Greek church. So the food is phenomenal. So if you can come on out, that would be great. If you can't, burgersandbands.org is where you donate. And it would be a shame if you didn't donate. You know you want to do that. All mm -hmm. right, guys, we will see you next week. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.